Picture this, you're in Hawaii, soaking in the purple and orange sunset, life is good. You're in paradise. Or are you? You don't have to look far to find Hawaii's homeless population. The bribery charges against former Senator English and former Representative Cullen. in Mexico making loads of crystal meth and then shipping it here. And they say it's getting harder to track down. Hawaii, in all its glory, may not be as beautiful as you think it is. Underneath all that island appeal lies tales of corruption and poverty that might show you not everything that glitters is gold. Our journey into the filthier side of Hawaii starts with a tale of greed. Jay Kalani English was a man who was trusted by the people. He was an advocate for Hawaiian culture and progressive environmental reforms, issues that the community held near and dear to their hearts. He was well-loved and well-respected. In 2014, he was given immense power as the state's Senate Majority Leader. Some people in this position use it as an opportunity to make changes for the better. But for some people, this is a chance to benefit themselves further. And unfortunately, that is exactly what Jay Kalani English did. On February 24, 2020, English accepted a $1,000 bribe from Honolulu businessman Milton Choi in exchange for assistance with cesspool legislation that could potentially benefit H2O Process Systems, his wastewater company. A few weeks later, English accepted another bribe, this time amounting to $10,000 to kill the cesspool bill, even telling Choi, it's easy to kill bills. The bill was unable to advance because of the COVID-19 pandemic. In January of the following year, English accepted yet another bribe from Choi worth $5,000 for anticipated legislative assistance. All in all, English accepted bribes in the form of money, dinners, and lodging amounting to more than $18,000. But little did Jay Kalani English know that Milton Choi was cooperating with the FBI at the time as an informant regarding an investigation on public corruption and financial fraud. Initially, federal investigators weren't concerned about English until he unknowingly alerted them by asking Choi for hotel rooms in Las Vegas. English was arrested by federal agents in January 2021 during a law enforcement traffic stop after his final meeting with Choi, where he actually attempted to hide the $5,000 bribe under his vehicle's floor mat. In February, he pleaded guilty to charges of honest services wire fraud, admitting to accepting bribes of cash and other gifts in return for influencing cesspool-related regulations and policies. He was handed a 40-month sentence and a $100,000 fine for his actions. In April, he stepped down from his seat citing long-haul coronavirus symptoms as the reason. He did not mention his arrest. Interestingly enough, he was not alone in this. Former State Representative Ty Cullen received the same charges, to which he also pleaded guilty. He has been alleged to take around $45,000 from Milton Choi, going as far back as 2014, most notably accepting poker chips in New Orleans totaling $22,000. These bribes were also intended for the advancement of H2O process systems, having Cullen provide legislative support for the benefit of the company. The businessman behind the bribes, Milton Choi, is also expected to face federal charges, although none have been brought up yet. Hawaii's secrets don't stop there. A far more unusual case involves the seemingly minor theft of a mailbox. But upon closer inspection, the situation is more complicated than it appears to be. It is a dispute that has grown into one of the most controversial scandals nationwide, one that has planted seeds of doubt about the integrity of those in office. Gerard Puena had money in the bank he wanted to invest. He gave tens of thousands to his niece, Catherine Keloa, so that she can invest on his behalf. A couple of years later, Puana's mother wanted a reverse mortgage to be able to buy a condominium for her son. Catherine agreed to help under the condition that she may use some of the money to consolidate her own debt. After some time, the Puanas noticed something odd. Their accounts had been drained of hundreds of thousands of dollars, yet the balance on the mortgage had been skyrocketing because of missed payments. They were in a tight spot and eventually, Puana's mother would lose her home. All the blame points to one person, Catherine Keloa. In March of 2013, the Puanas filed a suit against Catherine for fraud and financial elder abuse. She was set to face court on June 19th, two days of depositions with the Puanas' civil attorney. However, the proceedings took a hard left when it was interrupted by the most unexpected incident. On June 21st, the Kiloa's mailbox was reported stolen. 
Video surveillance appears to show Gerard Puana committing the crime, pinning him as the primary suspect. A few days following the alleged theft, Gerard Puana was arrested for the crime. He was caught in the act and, as it stands, he appears to be done for. Federal public defender Alexander Silvert took on Puana's case. Considering the evidence and the fact that Catherine Kaloa was married to Honolulu Police Chief Louis Kaloa, he was expecting a plea bargain at the very most. To his surprise, Puana strongly insisted that he was framed. Even though he wasn't convinced of his client's claim, he decided to do a little digging, and what he found upon closer inspection was rattling to say the least. After watching the video surveillance with his colleagues, Silvert and the others observed that the man in the video just didn't look like Puana. In addition, it was reported that the stolen mailbox was manufactured by Gaines and was worth $380. And here is where things get interesting. Upon further research, investigators came to the conclusion that the Kiloa's mailbox was from a different brand and is said to be worth around $150. A lot of questions are suddenly raised, including why the value of the mailbox was falsified. As it turns out, in order for a theft to be considered a felony in Hawaii, the price of the stolen goods have to exceed $300. Kiloa, who was a city prosecutor, would have been presumably familiar with this factoid. Catherine's lies started to unravel before her very eyes. Inconsistencies started showing up left and right in the form of missing police reports and altered chain of custody reports. Even their timelines weren't consistent. Police were already investigating the crime hours before Catherine called 911 to report the missing mailbox. This calls to question the integrity of Hawaii's police force. Throughout the entire ordeal, there have been signs of abuse of power on the Kaloa's part. High-profile officers began to work on the case despite it being a minor crime. Half a dozen officers lied to investigators about the details of the alleged theft. Even Louis Kaloa participated while taking the stand by attacking Puana's character, causing a mistrial in an effort to avert negative attention from his wife. The trial extended itself to seven years, starting in 2013 and only reaching its conclusion in 2020. In the end, Catherine Kaloa was sentenced to 13 years and a $454,494.78 restitution fine, while Louis Kaloa is set to serve seven years and pay $237,698.56, including conspiring to frame a relative with a crime to conceal their own fraud. An order for the forfeiture of property representing proceeds of fraud was also issued, which includes their former Honolulu home, a Rolex watch, and $228,746.79. What started out as a family dispute has turned into an issue that has put the dishonesty within the local police force on display. So much controversy has surrounded the case that Louis Kaloa stepped down from his position as police chief. Several officers have also been asked to resign because of their involvement. The consequences of their actions may be irreparable for quite some time. Their public image has been tarnished to the core, and mistrust from the people is at an all-time high. Hawaii has social issues that need to be addressed. Drugs have gone rampant in the state, making up for more than half of all their convictions, in contrast to only 41% worldwide. Over 8% of their population is reported to be using drugs. The most commonly peddled substances are Mary Jane and Crystal. Crystal in particular has been a trouble spot. There has been as much as 1.5% of Hawaiian residents estimated to be regular abusers annually, more than double the national percentage, which is around 0.6%. Reportedly, nearly 35% of incarcerated men in Honolulu had the drug in their system at the time of arrest. Another one of Hawaii's problems is their homeless residents. They have the third largest homeless population per capita in the United States. The number of homeless individuals is estimated to be around 15,000, and most of them can only expect to live until the age of 53, 30 years less than the average. Sadly, these people are some of the most affected by the drug crisis too. Many of the homeless suffer from addiction, further pulling them towards the path of destruction. These matters have to be taken care of soon, or the state may find themselves in danger of going in a downward spiral. If the drug crisis isn't handled properly, there is a real possibility of having an epidemic affect the area, and if the homeless population keeps rising, they might run out of land to occupy and spill over to popular tourist destinations. This could potentially deter travelers from visiting, negatively impacting Hawaii's largest source of income. 
and it won't be too long till the Hawaii that we know and love may be gone forever.